up you guys? Uh, all right, at my good buddy Matt Stell's house today, very talented singer, very tall and talented singer, um, for an episode of Come On In The Whiskey's Fine. Uh, as you can see, got my 31 foot Airstream with me. Uh, I, t I try to make it easy on the guests. Come to them, show up in their driveway, park it, make them a drink, and uh, we'll just talk about life, music, the industry, uh, how much we miss live shows, and uh, having a drink together. So come on, we'll go get them. What's up, dude? Buddy! What's happening, pal? Sounding good in here, man. Well, I'm playing your songs, that's why. <laughs> I guess I, uh, I have to tell you, come on in. The whiskey's fine. That's my, that's my, that's the line for this show. Of so course. when you walk in. Uh huh. I love that. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for being on here with me today. Man. I can only think of about two other places I'd rather be right now. Golf course. Uh huh. And the 19th hole. The 19th hole. But we're gonna make this is a bit of a 19th. This is a hole. bit of a 19th hole traveling. Line. Um, I do apologize. I have picked the one of the well. There's probably several locations that you don't fit in, but certainly this one. <laughs> uh, inside of an airstream. What are you six, seven, six, eight? Yeah, they're they're about six, so seven. Right yeah. in there. I list it six, seven. List so, so program height in, six, in the program. Seven. That's right. Taped, braced. And everything, yeah. Well, there's people that need boots for to be six six or seven, and there's mm -hmm. people that are actually six six or seven. <laughs> You're actually six six or seven. I'm a, I'm a six four, kind of need my boots to get there. Ah, uh, yeah, but you you uh, you got a nice pair of boots that I destroyed earlier today <laughs> with a silver sharpie. But uh, so Sarah, your day to day manager lost mm -hmm. her job earlier today. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, she's gonna find out from this from this interview. But she uh, so. We were we were getting ready to do this interview earlier, and mm -hmm. and uh, she walked in. You had to sign a hat. You just shot a music video, right? I did, yeah. So the hats from the music video. You're signing it for a giveaway, as we do. And she walked in with a pack of sharpies, which had a silver sharpie in it. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and my first thought is silver sharpies are useless. Yeah, everyone that is <laughs> is in this. I don't. I feel like that. No one agrees on anything except that silver sharpies never work. Useless. Correctly. Useless. Yeah. Okay, so but but it's, so you sign the hat in silver sharpie. Naturally, it barely writes on the hat. You can mm -hmm. you have to go over it twice so you can see it. <laughs> right. And then you start shaking it to try to make it work, which Nash is what happens. As one does. Then you open your hand, and yeah. it's full. It's silver. You it look is. like the Tin Man. Did you get it off? I've got most of it off. It's but, still there. Uh, we got some remnants. Yeah, it's everywhere anyway. but on my. Hand. It's everywhere but on. Matt Stell's hand. We found the, the episode name mm -hmm. everywhere, but on Matt Stell's hand. It is also on my boots. Yeah. So I, I do have a new addition here on the boots. Yeah. Uh, which I think just adds character. You got some on your jeans. That's right. That's right. We're no. good. Um, all right. So, again, thank you for being here. It's just fun to get to hang out with people. It's been a long time since we've seen people. 100%, uh, man. I'm going to uh, my party trick a bit when I go to parties. What yeah. I like to do. Um, I like to make drinks for people, just kind of bartend. So mm -hmm. the whole premise of this is make you a drink, hang out in an airstream, which is one of my favorite places to be. Um, you know, maybe sing a song or two, talk about life, catch up, because I feel like we hadn't seen anybody in a year, because it's been crazy. So I uh, I called you a couple weeks back, asked mm -hmm. if you wanted to do this. You said yes, but there was one exception. You said uh, that you had given up drinking for Lent. Mm -hmm. like, so, an, like an idiot. Like an idiot. Like, I mean, I know any other time you'd be drinking. Yeah. I mean, oh. you're, you're good at it. You're oh. really good at it. Um, First team. So I got that. That was one hiccup. Uh, so I, I figured I could do two things. We could, we could pour whiskey in a bottle and fake like you were drinking, or we could really lean into it mm -hmm. and say, uh, all right, I'll learn how to make a mocktail. Yeah, and I'll learn how to drink a mocktail. And you learn how to drink a mocktail. So what I did was, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up, and make you a drink here in a minute. Perfect. And I have I have brewed a tea. Okay. That is cinnamon and orange flavored tea. Cinnamon so it looks orange. and kind of tastes like whiskey without being whiskey. Okay. And I'm gonna make you an old fashioned with no whiskey. And here's the thing, and this may be another episode name. Mm-hmm. Uh, Instead of a mocktail, I figured we could call the episode the Moxtel. <laughs> Mo <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, episode one brought to you by Moxtel. That's right. Because <laughs> this is this is not Matt Stell right now. This is Moxtel until <laughs> until Lent's over. That's right. All right. So, 
I'm going to make you drink. Love it. <laughs> you never know it wasn't whiskey, to be honest with you. That fake whiskey brought to you by Bigelow Orange Spice Herbal Tea. It works really good. A good old-fashioned old -fashioned mixer. All right, normally we have more process in the drink making, but that's pretty much all we need for the mock still. Shake it up. This always reminds me of the shake wave. You know? One of my rules, never want to make a drink for anybody and use just regular ice cubes. Never want to do that. Uh, always want to have a nice circle ice cube just like this. Drop it in. Presentation's not everything, but it's important. All right, I'm going to make myself a regular old fashioned. One cocktail, one moxtail. Yes, sir. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, partner. Good to see you. Oh, man, that's delicious. Pretty good, isn't it? It's real good. It's what it's, it is. It's real good. I, I, I made one because I've obviously never made a mocktail before in right. my life because why would you ever do I've that? I've never drank a mocktail before. Yeah, I figured that. Life. First one ever. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I tasted it. I was like, damn, that's that's good. You know, I really wish you could have a sip of this. Yeah, me too. Because this is my drink I'm most proud of. But I'm not. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I, uh, I'm just glad that this doesn't have booze in it because I wouldn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> that's man. how this. It's, it's delicious. This one tastes that good too, though. That's mm. the thing. Dangerous. All right. So, like I told you, this is this is the first episode. Mm -hmm. I made no cards like a true talk I show. I love it. True talk you're, show host. You're a pro over here. I've always wanted to be a bit of a talk show. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, so far, so good. Um, I did a little Matt Stell Wikipedia search earlier. <laughs> Great. I was basically just looking for things that we had in common. Mm-hmm. We have some things in common. So here's both April, both April babies, April 19th. April 19th. April 15th. I would argue that yours is better. April 15th is tax day. Oh, that's so, true. Damn. I uh, I have to worry about taxes every day, every every year of my it's, life, basically. Right. It's a bit of a depressor on your birthday, especially you know if you haven't paid them yet. Right. Time. Or ever. Um, I'm just kidding. Or ever. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> uh, um, both our moms are named Lisa. Really? Yeah. Incredible. So talk to me about your mom was just in town, right? Yeah, she's. I'm uh, an avid follower of yours on Instagram. Just so you know, so I keep up. Yeah, Ma's been crushing it. Uh, I, she stole your phone. Yeah, well, <laughs> so mom's in town. My, my cousin had a baby. She's in the studio. Mom's watching uh, the child while she's in the studio and hanging out with me. I haven't seen her since uh, Thanksgiving because obviously the, you know, plague. Yeah. But uh, now we're we're, plague. we're all <laughs> we've all got our uh, our vaccine. So anyway, she's in town hanging out, and uh, I thought I would do. I thought I was doing her a favor, like I added her to my YMCA membership so she could work out when she was in town. I thought, what a nice thing to do. And yeah. it turns out that um, not everyone loves working out on their vacation. Yeah. And she um, didn't appreciate it that much. So she took my phone and posted her own Instagram story of, um, <laughs> of getting me back. And she shrunk all of my jeans uh, out of spite. She actually did that? Yeah. Well, not all of them, but she shrunk some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because my mom's a G. Mom's savage. No, but she's a savage. She is not mom playing. Is she's the sweetest person in the world, but she is just a just a magnum badass. She's really cool. Well, cheers to mom. That's a, I, I, what you can say it, but not everybody would have actually gone and done it, which I'm pretty proud right. of her. Right. About uh, and and the YMCA, which if you don't know about Matt, he it's it's not just YMCA for him. It's W H Y M C A. Yeah, the Y M C A. Y M C A. Why am I here, M C A? Yeah, um, I just feel like when I get on social media, like everybody looks like they're having fun working out. Grind, don't stop. Gains, uh, live, laugh, eat, love, whatever. And it's like I don't want to be there eighty percent of the time. That I'm like some days it just catch me on a good day, but a lot of days I'm just like there because I know that I need to be. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like we need a little more truth in advertising there at the gym. The gym sucks, but it's worth it. So you, so what you're saying, you, you think we need a bit more transparency slash truth on social media would be your... Yeah, and I think I'm the first person that's ever thought or said that, so that's pretty cool. Well, you, you, there's less than you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. But I would, I would support that view of social media. Uh, 
And it's actually one thing I really like about your Instagram, your socials. I, I always giggle because it's I, it seems <laughs> it seems like you just kind of don't care in a cool way about social media. Like you just kind of are who you are, which yeah. I love. People, I grew up basically uh, golden boy. Like you know, my parents were. Uh, they always I, I could have done something horribly, and my mom would have been like, "Oh my God, you did that so great! You did right. that so great!" Right. So I was raised up in this way of. Uh, trying to be best at everything, trying to uphold this image I was, right. I was supposed to uphold. And so I've always gravitated to people that, just like, you know, the crazy uncle that just says whatever he wants. Sure. Anybody that is just exactly who they are and they don't give a damn and they just want to be that, mm -hmm. I love. Because yeah. I, it's taken me a long time in life to actually be able to get to that point in my life where mm -hmm. I can sit here with you, have a conversation, and not be like, oh, how can I impress Matt the whole time? You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So yeah. I always appreciate that. So Yeah, I mean, it's like, keep it up. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I mean, I can really only know one way, which is just kind of just to do my thing well, that's a good and put way. it on the video and that's put a, it on tape. That's a so. good way. Yeah, we'll see. So the hardest thing about this for me is to be on camera and act like we're not on camera. So mm -hmm. I just would like to take another drink and we can do that. Um, everything we do, the music industry, we're always, you know, nine a.m. phoner with this radio station. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoom meeting here, which is a new thing, obviously, but lots of those happening. Mm -hmm. Everything's on camera. Right. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this. Even though it is on camera, I want it to be some type of super laid back. There's no agenda. Yeah. I mean, I do have some notes, but there's no really agenda to talk and just to hang. Um, so, and it's also fun because people don't realize we're on the road normally, mm -hmm. uh, on the road so much, and we're obviously all in the same industry, but a lot of times we don't really get to actually mm -hmm. hang a lot that's of times. That's exactly right. I mean, like, we see each other in passing at festivals, and, and we're on the same label, so I'll see you here and there mm -hmm. with that, but you don't really actually get to, you know, I'm in your house hanging with you for 30 minutes earlier. We never really got to do that, That's which, right. which is great. Unless our paths cross at a show or something like that, you know, it's just really yeah. keeping up. And that is one thing, you know, about social media that is nice. You can... Uh, Keep keep up with what your friends are doing, you know. And uh, did yeah. we did we slander social media too much earlier? We had to ease, ease pump the brakes. <laughs> yeah, pump, pump the brakes. Yeah, there, there are some good parts about it. There's some really not good parts, but my favorite thing about the internet that's ever been said is the internet makes smart people smarter and dumb people dumber. And it's just very true. It's a great great tool, but it can be it can be used for bad bad things. You know? Right. You never know. So. Right. To continue to slander the internet, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't so, think it's going to catch on. So we did we did a thing that a lot of people haven't done in 2020, which we did yeah. get to play a show together. Mm -hmm. We played a writer's round at, is it the Governor's Club? Mm -hmm. Golf course, which is a good day, any day. Golf yeah. all day, play a writer's round that night. Um, and we ended up having a pretty fun night that night. We did. Uh, I didn't know this at the time. We played the round. That was before Lent. That was before Lent, and we could drink. You yeah. could drink. I was yeah. still drinking both times. Um, we played the round. We were hanging out afterwards. I turned around, and you were sitting there talking to Colby Calais. Mm -hmm. Calais. How do you say Calais? Colby. I'm sorry. I messed this up. I'm not sure. Do you know? Can you redeem me? Calais? I've been, I've been saying it how you just said Calais? it. So. Calais. Calais. Calby Colay. Colby Cal Colby Calais. Pam. Calby Callen. Calby Calais. Yeah, that, that's we'll it. tag her in this and make sure she sees. Yeah. She is just a real sweetheart of a person too, by the way. Well, she is, and that's really the only time I've spent with her was that mm -hmm. night. But we went, uh, and we left there. She goes, "Why well, don't we're, we're having some people over at our place?" Uh, ended up around a fire with some guitars. But before that, ended up on miniature go karts, mm -hmm. uh, which I got to see. Your the motorcycles. Big, I yeah. got to see your big ass on a miniature yeah. uh, motorcycle and go kart, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, it looked um, like one of those bears riding a unicycle in the yeah, circus. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of. But it was, awesome. yeah. it was awesome. It was awesome. Did that? I remember. What? Well, you went out on tour. I rode once. You kept going out on the roads, hitting the roads. Yeah. I whipped it around a little bit around. in the neighborhood. Um, but I never met Colby, and it's, it's a cool thing about Nashville. Like, Obviously, I know her music, fan mm -hmm. of her stuff. Um, she makes a couple calls. Gavin DeGraw ends up coming over, which was kind of hilarious for me because uh, Gavin was sitting there playing all of these songs from a stripped record. And he, Gavin, I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but he was kind of playing it like, Here's a song off an old record. I don't know if you guys are going to know this. And then, meanwhile, I'm in the corner singing every harmony slash, I mean, every yeah. single note. Because that was one of my favorite CDs growing up. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being a cool night. And a cool, a cool, uh, 
kind of look into Nashville. That, that was pretty cool. Oh, 100%. It's one of the yeah. best parts of Nashville is how much music is here in all different kinds. And um, yeah, everybody's coming here, I feel like. Yeah, and the community is really, um, you know, for the most part, pretty tight knit. You know, a lot of people know a lot of people. It's just in that world, like the music world is kind of a, a, a small town, even though, like, like we were talking about there. earlier, in normal times, we're all so busy, we don't always get to see each other. But, um, you know, you find that you'll kind of be fast friends with people that are mm-hmm. kind of in the same, your same bubble, I feel like. We all go through the same stuff, mm-hmm. for sure. But um, what I want people to know about you is I'm a huge fan of you. Been a huge fan since I heard your music. Likewise, um, brother. Thank you. And and uh, I, that's what I want to do with this, pulling Airstreams up in people's driveways, show maybe my fans that don't know about you or whoever doesn't know to try to show them you. So... I, can I just can I just interject when I when I sure. say he pulled a uh, when you say that you pulled uh, your airstream in my driveway, this guy uh, just backed this thing right up my my tight little driveway right here in town. It didn't stop any traffic the whole time. He's a real deal. He pulled it here. He backed it in. He scotched the tires, and here we are. So I just want that on documented record that, that you... I, I you left a little little scrape on your driveway, but that was only because we had to back it in twice Honestly, for camera purposes. Then that's my driveway's fault for not being... Well, you know, that's true. And that's my... I want to apologize to that you is for my true. driveway. That is true. So it's not my fault. That makes mm-hmm. me feel better. Yeah. But yeah, I backed this thing in. And the, whole, and the whole thing is, you hear people's songs on the radio, right? That's how most fans are made. Spotify, mm-hmm. iTunes, whatever it is. You hear uh, Prayed For You, which was kind of your one that took off in mm-hmm. First of All, and then uh, Everywhere But On, which has always been my favorite. I'm glad that ended up being a single. Um, but you never get to have the, at Colby's house, experience, uh, or fans often don't have, get to have the experience of sitting around a fire and grabbing a guitar and kind of see what people are going to play. Mm-hmm. And so we were there that night, and you grabbed one of Colby's 48 guitars, and... <laughs> um, you, I remember you sat down and started, I'm not sure what song it was, but it was super bluesy, super, oh, yeah. super swampy, yeah. and I kind of got to hear you sing in a way that obviously you love to sing, yeah. um, and I th- I was even a bigger fan after that, which was cool, because that's kind of, you know, I grew up on Amos Lee, mm-hmm. and you know, some Gavin DeGraw, and all, the, all that stuff, and I'm from Mississippi, so the blues is what I like to do too, mm-hmm. and man, I love it. Man. That's just some old Tab Ben Wall songs. Yeah, I, you know, I'm like, I grew up playing uh, those kind of blues tunes on, I mean, that's like when I sit down to play a guitar, you know, that's some of the stuff, like you're saying, where you're from, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm from the other side of that river as you mm-hmm. are, so, um, you know, you kind of, you kind of can't get away with playing some kind of bluegrass bluesy stuff too much, like, you can't get too far away from it, if I, right. especially if I'm drinking a little bit, the first, that's what I want to do, and then play some old country music, so, um, but yeah, man, you can't. You can't beat the blues. It's, it's not just a prop if you want to play one for us. I mean, it's up to you, but... Yeah, I'll play one for play, you. Play, if you want to play 30, 45 seconds of one, go sure. for it. Sure. Sure, I'll play one for you. Uh, I think she's tuned to standard. Uh, I'm trying to think. What would I play? has left me good after I gave my love so long out there was somebody new and you know I just can't sit here long it's so hard to drive these tears in my eyes takes a long time to get to Baton Rouge. All I want to hear is somebody play my song when a Cajun man gets the blues. When the glasses, that's funny that you I made lost that my sound. Orange. Oh, you did. I lost more. Just sorry to be all right. Man down. That's so good, dude. Oh, bro. One of my favorite things about artists, and it just continues to be true, is what they cover. 
right? What they cut. I mean, obviously true, you man. love their stuff, but we're 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 forced into this funnel of you you want approval from fans. Obviously, you want people to like what you do. You want radio to like what you do and play your songs. So you're always kind of chasing that. Mm-hmm. But really, when people pick up a guitar and start start just whatever comes out, you know, whatever they right. grew up singing, that's when you can really see what they love to do. And, you know, that's yeah, what I love about it. A hundred percent. And I think too, like. I spent so much time playing bars and like Buffalo Wild Wings, like places that like nowhere we haven't played. Yeah, like all those places. And like my dumb ass was like playing original songs, like most of those, like at least half of what I was doing. So it's so funny now, you know, when I sit down, we we're lucky to get to, you know, play songs, whether it's travel someplace or even on Zoom, you know, for fans, social media, and I'm playing my own stuff. It's like there's part of me that kind of misses and sitting down just picking up a guitar yeah. and playing something that I learned. You know, one of the reasons I learned to play guitar. So, yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Like you said, just playing everywhere all the time and what people cover, and you can kind of like see where some of that stuff came from in their music. You know, coming out. Like mm-hmm. I, I would have guessed Amos Lee and Gavin DeGraw listening to uh, to what you know to your music. So. Yeah, I mean, and all that stuff. I mean, blues, blues is where it's at. I mean, like it's it's when I I don't ever. I don't know about you, but did you sit down and learn the covers of songs? Or did you just kind of hear them and figure out your own covers? Because I I would be out there on the streets playing covers, but I really never even heard the originals of songs sometimes. Mm -hmm. Those chords, I mean, you can't, Mm -hmm. you know. This is like, I like to do this one. I've been doing it for years. It's a... Well, I hear the train coming It's rolling down the bend I ain't seen the sun shines I don't know when Yeah, I'm stuck in Folsom Prison Time keeps dragging on Yeah, I hear that train coming On down to San Antonio Johnny Cash, I do apologize I just messed up your words <laughs> Good. When I was just a baby my mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't you ever play with guns? Oh, but I shot a man in Reno just to watch that man die. But that train keeps on rolling. I hang my head and I I love all that stuff, and it just—it's a backbone of a lot of that stuff in the first place, you know. Especially yeah. those older songs like yeah. that. Yeah. When no, nobody's a blank slate, everybody's kind of copying off. Yeah. Things, you know, so. We all took from somebody. That's right. Um, all right. All what cover so what what April like. Kids, both named, both mamas' names are Lisa. Both mm-hmm. both Lisas are wonderful humans. I love my mama. Um, another interesting thing. So you played basketball in college. I did. Drury mm-hmm. University. Missouri, Springfield, Missouri. Mm-hmm. How many years you play? I played there for four years. Four years, center. I was a forward. Forward, yeah. so four. Yeah, yeah. four. Three. The four position. The three, the four. So whatever screens needed set. Whatever, whatever rebounds needed. Whatever fouls needed to be committed. Yeah, I'm your guy. Yeah. I mean, a ton of. A, I feel like a ton of us are college athletes that end up in music, which it's, is it, funny. Yeah. But I mean, the, the, I would say the largest shock that I learned earlier, because I, I played baseball, so we I get the whole from sports to music, but, so you apparently s- applied to Harvard University's extension pre-med program, is that correct? Does the internet have this right? The internet does have, so, yes. But I mean, the more, the more, the real question is it said that you got accepted, which is even, I mean, anybody can apply. Well, okay, so Harvard's extension school has a program for folks that have a degree or two that, um, like I was thinking at one time, I'd moved to Nashville, right? And yeah. I'd been here a couple of years, I was trying to get a pub deal. I wanted to write songs, I wanted to make my little indie records on my own, but I wanted to write radio songs for guys like you. Yeah. And when I moved to town, I we were all looking for publishing deals and, and I hadn't had one in a couple of years and, and since that, that I'd been here, I, had, I it didn't pan out. Right. So uh, I went on this like medical outreach trip um, to Haiti, and I worked alongside some doctors and pharmacists, and I saw what they did, and I was like, you know, if I was ever going to do something else besides music, I might try to do this thing, because 
Um, it seemed fulfilling in a way that kind of, like I'm, I'm, and I know you have to be this way because you wouldn't be in this business if you weren't. But like music, you just you, you follow your passion to know what you want to do. And I was like, I could be passionate about this other thing. So when I came back, I was like, man, what do I need to be able to apply for med school? And then Harvard's Extension School has this pre med post back pre med program. So I applied, and by some clerical error, they let me in. And uh, I was going to, man, I was like six weeks leaving Nashville and moving up to the Northeast. Uh, to, to just change gears in life. And uh, I got the, I met Ash Bowers, who I've written, wrote, prayed for you with. He signed me to a publishing deal. Uh, we co-produced all my stuff together. Anyway, he offered me that publishing deal, and so I stuck around town and glad that I did. But, yeah, that was a fork in the road moment. So you were already in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was in, I'd been, I'd been in, in Nashville for like two, maybe going on three years. Um, and you know, just doing the thing we all try to do. Yeah. Know? And um, I just I read that and I was thinking because you had a master's. It says you had a master's in communication, mm -hmm. whilst working construction, <laughs> and then applied to pre med. And I read that and I said, well, he must have been as confused at what he wanted to do that I was. Man, I think so. I know that's exactly right. Like I got out of, and it, it probably the athlete part too. You know, you get used to putting everything you, you do behind like what you're passionate about. Yes. And it's like, that is the transferable skill. You know, that and being on a team. There's a lot of things that, like, sports, music, do whatever. But then that's kind of what, when, when you've lived your life, I feel like, so so long, with putting passion first and then working hard behind it, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do anything else, man. So it was like yeah. trying to find what, what else am I passionate about. And I knew I was passionate about music, but it's like, well, how long do I do this? You know, maybe right. I just, I'm always going to make records, but maybe nobody, you know, I'm not going to get a chance to do it for a living. And so... I was looking for That's cool, music. man. That's a good that's a good look into uh, what it takes to be in the music industry or any industry that's difficult is that you can go on a trip to Haiti and get that inspired to where you're going, you know what? I'm going to go do that because I freaking loved it. Because everybody feels that. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels the love or passion that they, that they when they do something they're passionate about, they feel it, but it's the doing. It's the, the dropping everything and like, yeah, I'm going to move to Nashville or right. yeah, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to med school. I'm and and you know something else too that's also I'm just now thinking about it that you're talking about it is when you move to Nashville and you meet people that are doing what you want to do whether they're songwriters or artists it becomes more accessible to you mm -hmm. you know you you're like oh well I know this person and they're doing what I want to do uh, and that just makes it like it's no longer a dream it's I mean it's still a dream but it's like someone's done it you know it was the right. same thing it was the first time I'd ever been around like physicians in that way and and these right. you know and it i guess it kind of was like no this can be done you can you know? see it happen yeah, yeah exactly that's cool. exactly i've always wanted to do that go on a mission trip i've never done it is that the only one you've been on or? man i've done some other stuff like that but that was the one that was most profoundly like like perception like perspective altering thing for me was seeing um what a place that if we left nashville right now we could be there in four hours probably oh, I mean, it's, okay you know yeah. it's like that close and it is a it's a world away it, it's so different right. and it made me think about the world and my place in it differently because of that trip it was very powerful that way and um you know those are it was i can't say it was a great trip because we were dealing with abject poverty and people that need it but it was transformative for sure right that, I mean, I don't know about you, that's always been one of my driving forces in trying yeah. to acquire fame or success or money to do something, you know, a charity with or whatever it is, mm -hmm. is to be able to give it back in a cool way. I mean, that's that's really, I mean, nobody needs that much money, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it's such a it's such a privilege, honestly, to have as much money as we have right now is a, is a complete privilege, but if you're once you're able to start, you know, playing stadiums and having that kind of money, the good you can do with it is insane for sure and 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 not only that you know e even as we sit right here like i love to tie one on and go to a lot go see live music go to a concert drink me a few whatevers i like to you know talk to girls or whatever have fun and you know what else i like to do is i like to help people other people do. like it's a part of the experience so like every time like country music is really great about this, about supporting causes like St. Jude and things like that, because I have a better time when I'm helping out. It's just like, yeah. it, 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 it improves my life. It's like one plus one equals three. So it's like, yeah. that to me is why it pairs so well with what we do, I think. Oh, yeah. 
You guys, my uh, I'm gonna take this because it's kind of funny because we're inside of his airstream shooting an episode. Uh, this is my little brother, and he's letting me use this airstream. So one sec. Hey, bro. Hi. I answered this because I'm uh, I'm mid interview with Matt Stell in the back of your airstream, and I thought it was funny that you called while we're using your airstream. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. What's up, bro? Hey, What's up, man? How you doing? Man, I'm loving your airstream, man. You got it fixed up in here. This is awesome. We are. Are you in dire need or in an emergency, or can I call you back? No, no, no. Y'all, y'all go ahead. I, I've been in this this estimating training all day long. I just saw your Matt miss call, so I just was calling back. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'll call you later. Okay. Y'all have a drink. All right. We are. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple things I want to know before we get out of here. Mm-hmm. I'll just jot a couple questions down. Is everybody in your family tall, or is that was that a random happening? Uh, a lot of my dad was about six five, and I have an uncle that's six six. So there, there's some height in the family for sure. So you make sense. I I do make a little bit of sense in that one respect. Yes. One in one way. My mm-hmm. dad's five eight, and my mom's five three. Yeah, you an outlier, bro. And I and I'm six four. Yeah. We don't know what happened, and I thought it was the milkman situation, mm-hmm. but I look just like my dad, just taller. So, and also, when did it happen? Because I know there had to be a summer that was four, yeah. five, or six inches. At least there was for me. Yeah, it was like between ninth and tenth grade, I think. I think I was eighth and ninth. My JV basketball coach was pumped. He yeah. Was very excited about it. <laughs> he, I came back the next year. He was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I love What it. happened? My first, like, hardback driver's permit said, like, my first, like, license said I was 5'11". So, that was, yeah, whatever they Yeah, so is. you shot. You yeah, shot 15, up. 15, yeah. Yeah. You, you put a good seven inches on. Um... Another thing I want to know about, favorite job you ever had previous to being in music? Damn, I kind of hated them all. No, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's a good, good answer as well. <laughs> no, I liked, um, you know, I used I to I saw take, you were in construction, yeah? Yeah, my dad was a contractor, so I yeah. did that. My I, dad's a contractor, too. Oh, yeah. We're mm-hmm. the same person. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I did enjoy that to an extent. Uh, my my grandmother has a farm, and, and I, I took care of it for a while, um, on the come up and, and I did enjoy that I like being around cows and stuff like that cows and trucks and those kinds of things so um, yeah yeah I've done a lot of stuff though man uh, over the over the the years to get here but those are probably my favorite see I worked in electrical my dad has an electrical company that his dad started it's mm. always been around and I, I love any manual labor I love even just down to mowing the yard I mm-hmm. love it slip wiring houses all that stuff mm-hmm. I know a lot of people hate it I loved it I don't know I mean it just made my, it made my, my heart feel good but I feel you um, this is an interesting question. Another uh, internet find. You mm-hmm. wrote a song for Casey Donahue. I, I wrote a couple, yeah, with Casey. Yeah, man. He he was actually Casey's a friend of mine, man. He was really one of the first people that ever uh, cared about what I was really doing, and and I wrote some songs together, and you know, in Texas, in that world, and had a little success. And actually, that was kind of what gave me the, I guess the the confidence to move here. And that was the thing. It. Yeah, I man. was gonna ask that too. What was the thing? It's there's normally one thing that happens that makes you go, okay, I can do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, I was in the uh, I was in that Texas world, Texas country world. In that, I had written some songs with some folks with him and and guys like, um, oh, Bart Crow and and a few a few others. Um, that uh, Corey Morrow. Um, but anyway, that doesn't really matter all that much. I, I moved. That's what I started listening to, and I tried to be like an artist in that scene and you know we did a little bit here and there and it was I mean I stayed super busy but um, I think there's an independent streak from that time and from that scene that I really gravitate towards more so than just any particular sound Mm -hmm. and so when I came here that was one of the things I I wanted to come here do things that I thought were cool but uh, try to write songs for the radio and it just turned out my song you're doing both (laughs) (laughs) Um, my first when I first started playing music playing Covers and Bars, mm-hmm. Crazy by Casey Donahue was on my set list. I don't know oh, if you remember nice. that song. Yeah, man, for sure. I can for barely sure. remember thinking about it now, but I remember that was one of my favorite songs to play, and I saw that earlier. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah man. Casey Donahue cuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, one more thing, and then we'll get you out of here. National Anthems. You've done a couple. Uh, uh-huh. You've done the Titans. You did the Packers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Brett Favre is from my hometown. Uh, oh, nice. He's kind of, you know, when I'm doing radio inter- interviews, I say, from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, they go, oh, they don't know where it is. So I say that's where Brett Favre is from. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a good buddy of mine. We play golf together oh, nice. and, and stuff. That's he, awesome. he played football where I played baseball at Southern Miss. Yeah, Southern Miss, yeah. So that was cool. You got to do the Packers. But what I want to know is, 
I've never done one. I'm a little bit iffy on doing one. Dude. In my opinion, it's a bit of a lose-lose situation. It's like being it's like being a, a peewee referee. Yeah. Like you either are you either do a good job and no one or notices, you get yelled at, or you do a bad job and everyone everyone hates you. hates you. Yeah. Is that how you feel about them? Yes, it is how I feel about them. Do I, you get nervous? Yes, I would get nervous. I've for sang sure. three of them in my life, but really only one. The other two were in COVID times. One was for a NASCAR race in the Titans. Okay. Um, which was live to tape, but still, it's not the same as in Lambo. I, bro, I never sang a national anthem ever, not one time in my life ever. Like not in the living room, not at a right, not at a high school game, nothing. Right. And I was at a music festival hanging out, and somebody there was hey yeah, blah blah blah, and I was that was also not Lent because they were like <laughs> I was a few tequilas in, they're like, we well, want to come to Green Bay in December and sing a national anthem. I was like hell yeah, let's do it. And immediate yes, yeah, immediate yes, yeah, and then yeah. as that time got closer and closer, it was like, damn it, man, I I really better not mess this up. So yeah, it was that was the first time I ever sang a national anthem ever was in the middle of Lambeau Field. Uh, and that Microsoft. was back when full full stadium, eighty thousand yeah. strong. Yeah, dude. yeah, it was crazy. Luckily, the weather was actually it was pretty mild. It was like forty degrees and the sun yeah. was shining in December yeah. in Green Bay, so it wasn't like fridge. That would have been another layer of awful. Yeah, but, but yeah. it was cool. We got through it. All right. So, should do you think I should go for one or should I keep saying no? Because I get asked to do them, and I I've never got asked by Lambo. Hey man, but I. <laughs> If I got asked by Limbo, they're asking a lot of people, I'm sure. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, hell yeah, man, do it. It's, Dude, I should, I should get over that fear, huh? I, yeah. I should definitely do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Or, or you know, kind of just freestyle a little bit. You know? Well, I kind of like singing with no, just just acapella a little bit better uh -huh. than I do around and, with with instruments anyway. So maybe maybe I'll give it a try. Give her a shot. If it Why goes not? if it goes badly, uh, it'll be your fault. It'll be my fault. It'll be your fault. And I'll let everybody know that. That's fine. That's uh, fine. I'll take the heat for that. But I just feel like YOLO, man. You know? You're right. You're right. You only YOLO once. If you're scared, it's probably because you want to do it. And you just That's right. Yeah, That's so. exactly right. All right. Well, uh, before we get you out of here, we don't have any advertisements on this show. So mm -hmm. why don't you just do a little bit of an advertisement for yourself? Uh, tell me what is your new song what's your song to radio right now sure. just for our, our people out there let everybody know where they can find it what to look for. sure well adam we just went to radio with uh, our third single that ain't me no more a couple weeks ago and um this song came out of out of nowhere man uh, hardy texted me and was like hey you ever cut an outside song and i was like i would send me this song it blew my blue just blew me away went and tracked it and we released it uh, soon after and uh met us out at radio right now and uh my i love it and i hope to it. Well, to I it. love it too. Go listen to it. Uh, shout out to Hardy. We're in the same group chat every day. Um, <laughs> he, the, the dude's writing everything right now, isn't he? It's crazy. It's crazy. A talented guy who's as talented as, as he is a good dude. So, um, and also good for you for cutting outside song. That is something that I think is uh, a bit of a lost art in Nashville. You know, motorcycle buddy. Um, <laughs> You know, it kind of used to be that there were the Tim McGraws and George Straits, and they were the, the best artists, and they had your best writers in town, and you combine the mm -hmm. two, and that's how you make these huge acts. And I think it's gotten a little bit where everybody wants to write their own song, which is fine. I've written all of mine up until now, too, but mm -hmm. I'm completely open to hearing something and going, you know what, I want to record that. 100%. Um, one thing that just happened to me, You Should Probably Leave by Chris Stapleton. Mm -hmm. I've, been I've been singing that song on the road for five years. And I've tried to cut it every year, and he always said, I'm going to use it, I'm going to use it. And he finally mm -hmm. ended up putting it out. So mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a, oh, man, I wanted that song. But. Man, that's a, that's a great song. But, dude, like you said, man, or, I mean, I feel like at the end of the day in Nashville, the song has to be king, and, and we go in and write songs every day, and, and the stuff that I cut, sometimes sometimes I write the ones that are the ones that I like, and then sometimes others just come in. And, and you know, there's so many talented people in this town. And uh, so many songs that, truth. that that move people, and yeah, I was I was uh, lucky to be the guy that got to cut that tune for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, well, you're a badass. I'm a huge fan. I love your voice. If you don't know who Matt Stell is, which is not very likely, but if you don't, <laughs> go check him out. He's one of my favorite voices in country music. Thank you for doing this uh, show with me. I got you a little something for yes for being a part of this. Uh, this is actually a whiskey that we, uh, I got to make myself, I got to blend it myself, yeah. um, and it just kind of goes with our Come On In The Whiskey's Fine uh, show, and this is for you, man. It's it's actual 
Oh my personalized goodness. bottle of whiskey and look uh, at that guy right there. Got my lyrics in here. <laughs> Hey, that would have been better if I put your lyrics instead of mine. <laughs> that would be have been, so but, good. Hey, um, as soon, I'm talking about as soon as the sun sets Saturday night, uh, I guess that would be April the 3rd or the 2nd, whenever it is right before, when Lent's over with. This is the first thing I'm reaching for, bro. Yeah, and you know what? I'm just not realizing that I, I did write you a typewriter note to go in that box, and it's still in my truck right now, and I forgot to put it in there. And it says something around those lines. It says, "It says as soon as Lent's over, <laughs> break this bad boy." Oh, I'm gonna. I'm, this is the first thing I'm reaching for, uh, right before I go put on uh, the Doliat discography on my Spotify. <laughs> All right, Matt Stell, everybody. Thank you, buddy. Come on.